Welcome back everyone to the Hello World guys, this is another episode of the Raycaster game in C++ series and in this video we are going to continue by fixing some of the issues we had with our 3D render in the last video. So if you remember in the last video we finished our 3D render but there was a uh, like uh, there were actually a couple of problems with it so let's go ahead and fix those now so i'm going to open up renderer.cpp and inside of this if i were to go here and run make uh, let me just run make here you can see that uh, uh, we do get a 3d view uh, on our screen but it first of all is a bit weird looking because there is no shading or anything it's completely just flat white and also you can see that uh, it is giving this weird sort of fisheye effect and the reason this f uh, effect is happening is because the rays that are you know in the center this actually makes sense because if the rays that are in the center of the uh, player's view are generally having a shorter distance compared to the ray that are farther away uh, like uh, you know the rays at the left are having a larger distance and the rays in the center are having a smaller distance so uh, how do we fix this actually this is is a little bit of a problem and we need to fix this because we do not want this we want the ball to appear flat for that we need to uh, currently if we consider each ray to form a right angle triangle we are taking the hypotenuse of the triangle we actually need to get the uh, perpendicular of the triangle and measure that as a distance uh, if solving that will really be simple let's uh, create uh, a uh, let's uh, just take our rate or distance so before we do anything we are going to take our rate or distance and multiply that by the uh, we'll take cos so std cos and uh, the values we'll pass here uh, will of course uh, uh, need to convert that to radians but the value is going to be our player dot angle minus the actual angle that we have got so we are going to get the actual offset of the angle then we are going to multiply that by pi by 180 to convert it to radians and, uh, and now it should work actually and uh, i'm going to uh well let's go ahead and test that actually so now you can see that uh, the walls are completely flat and if i go closer to them they are working correctly and this means that our basic 3d view is now absolutely working without any problems at all so now the next thing we need to add is shading because the flat view was not looking that great so we need to add some shading effects in here. So uh, in order to add some shading effects let's first start with the basic shading which is that uh, we'll uh, make the vertical walls a bit darker to kind of give us a sense of direction. For that uh, let's go here and uh, uh, let's call it bool is vertical. Uh, yeah let's uh, call this is uh, vertical is hit vertical so we'll have another boolean in the ray that will represent whether the uh, where we hit was vertical or not and uh, when we are uh, casting a ray actually we'll go here and uh, you can see that we are passing these here uh, and in here we are going to basically pass our whether our uh, v dist is the less than s dist if it's less than s dist then of course it's vertical so we'll pass that and now let's go back up to here and inside of this we need to change it so that we actually you know uh, when we cast the ray we uh, apply that shading so for that let's create a float called shade and let's set that to uh, 1 but uh, uh, if well uh, actually let's set that uh, let's use the ternary operator let's go here and say ray dot is hit vertical if it's hit this vertical let's set that to 0 0.8 else we'll set that to 1 and when we are drawing this we'll say column dot set color set fill color for the color we'll just pass in sf col column color and uh, for the red green and blue we'll say uh, let's say for example we can just pass in uh, if we want a white color we can just say 255 multiplied by our shade uh, on each axis so 255 because this is actually yeah, based on like uh, bytes and not on like floating point uh, numbers so we need to do it this way so we'll say column dot fill color and we'll set the fill color like that and uh, let's go ahead and run this actually so yeah now you can see that the walls that are vertical actually have a slightly different shade and that uh, gives our raycaster a better sense of kind of direction and we are being able to see these things a bit better and uh, yeah it's all looking much much uh, smoother now of course currently you can see that the resolution of our raycaster is very very low 
and uh, we can try increase it but uh, uh, we can only increase it to a limit and after that it would get too much so if i increase the number of rays to like 1200 for example to cast like literally one ray per pixel uh, you can see that it still runs kind of smoothly on my computer here but it might not run smoothly on like every computer so 1200 is a very big amount for the rays let's just settle for something like 600 yeah uh, that's going to be pretty awesome so uh, now we have got this and uh, it appears to be working quite correctly and uh, uh, this is looking nice however now we'll also like to add some brightness here so let's say float brightness and uh, we will set this to one point uh, basically one uh, minus uh, uh, the render distance we'll take a float called max render distance which we have not created yet but we will create in a second and we'll divide that by uh, our rate actual distance and then we'll subtract one from it and uh, if our brightness is if our brightness uh, is uh, great uh, well it's less than zero then we are going to just basically set our brightness to be zero because uh, we don't want it to be less than zero and uh, currently it says that of course that's an undeclared identifier we'll solve that in a second and in the end we'll just uh, uh, with our shade we'll take this uh, value that we have got and we'll multiply this by our brightness so we'll say multiply by brightness and uh, now let's go up here and uh, let's create the max render distance so let's just say const expression float max render distance and we'll set that to our max raycast depth uh, well uh, let's just say multiply it by uh, well actually uh, we can create it in a different way so uh, we'll actually create this inside of here like a uh, float max uh, render distance because uh, uh, this will depend on uh, distance this will depend on the size of the map so we'll just take our max break cost depth and multiply that by our map dot get cell size which will give us a pretty accurate uh, distance that we are rendering to at maximum so and in here we'll change this to use that local variable instead instead of using the constant global constant one so let's use say max render distance here this one and actually there is a little bit of a mistake here uh, ray dot distance is uh, not supposed to be at here uh, that was a bit of an oversight so we need to say ray distance divided by our max render distance ray, dis uh, ray dot distance actually ray dot distance uh, distance like that and let's go ahead and run this and hopefully this will be better so if I run this you can see that uh, uh, the walls that are farther away are giving a slightly darker color uh, you can see that uh, uh, the walls that are closer to us are giving a lighter color compared to the walls that are farther away which are giving a darker color so yeah that means that our system is basically working and it's working correctly we are getting uh, our walls shaded and uh, uh, our 3d render looks quite uh, good I'd say so yeah with that we've got our basic ray caster out of the way in the next videos we'll refine it and improve it further so yeah stay tuned for that make sure to share this video with other people as well and uh, make sure to like and subscribe as well so you don't miss the next one I'll see you in the next one and bye